no. But before 2000, everybody was shooting in the film. Yeah, and that's what I was doing. That's my experience. Ten years in the industry working in film. And what happened was, was the fact that, that when I came over here, things were still working in film, but we had to rise to digital. You know, everything all started with that whole dot com and Avid and Final Cut and everything else like that. So what happened was I had to relearn. So I had to kind of like go back to the bottom, rise back up, and that's why I have my company, Square One Pictures. Yeah, I had to go back to Square One. So that's what I've been doing. I basically, you know, I went and got my teaching certificate, got my master's at John Moore's. You know, I've been teaching community video and then also learning the whole new digital platform scenario and everything else. What I mean by the digital platform is social networks, HD, DV, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, but hopefully I was still me in my creative process and that was being an independent filmmaker. So basically, just in short, I mean, and I'm going to show you some of my stuff, but basically just in short, um, I started out uh, pretty much hopefully like you guys, you know, I mean, I started out in school and I wanted to be a filmmaker, yeah. Um, I actually wanted to be a writer and I just love film, so I was a mad film buff, still am, you know, comic books galore. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, like, if you have any ounce of creativity, that's where it begins, in reading comics. You know, watching movies, loving, eating that popcorn in the dark, and all that nine yards. And that's where I come from, doing it that way. So, I'm sitting in my house, you know, and I'm, you know, just watching, you know, I just see him, you know, as a man of diversity, as a black man, you know, we had the rise of the black filmmaker in around 1988, with Spike Lee, when he did She Gotta Have It. So, Spike Lee, all of a sudden, Roger Ebert, big famous movie critics, like, oh my God, this kid is phenomenal, right? Yeah, you gotta watch his stuff and everything. So then, they started to open the doors for other people, like the Hutley Brothers, Robert Townsend, you know? And then there became a foundation of filmmakers that said, hey, listen, man, we all gotta ride together. And I was in that, and I was in that period. So I was taking more courses, more writing courses, more acting initiatives, working with you guys. And like, you know, believing, hey, I can do this. That's the whole point. But you pick up a camera and film. What are we waiting around for money for? You know, I mean, I got you, 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 we all to do this. And we make horror films, comedies, romances, whatever. And that's what I was doing. You know, and I was making like my own films. They weren't that, that, not that great because what happens is you could think you're a filmmaker, but then when you actually get on set, everything changes, right? All the parameters that you didn't think about, because logically you're thinking one thing. Your tunnel vision, if you're a director, is thinking one thing. What is my film going to be? Not about like, okay, if I could get a number of bodies and get everybody doing stuff, right? I'm just thinking about my film. I was having a conversation with you guys earlier before it started, and we were talking about horror, and I was talking about, you know, well, what is the secret of horror? What is missing, you know, from those elements? And I think what's actually missing, really, is the education. Because I'm pretty sure in this room of filmmakers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that means in this room there's a bunch of you who think that you're the next best thing. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, how cocky are one of some of you, huh? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Look at this kid right here. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I'm sitting here by myself. And I, I got it. I got the whole plan. You know, I know what I'm doing. Right? No man is an island. That's the first secret. No film works without collaboration. So the importance of the team is important. And that doesn't mean having your girlfriend be your AD. First of all, you have to know what an AD is. How many know what an AD is? Audio or director. Right, say it, what is it? Audio director. Audio director? Assistant and, um, director, man. Assistant. Now you lose on the chase. <laughs> <laughs> all right? AD. Art director. And, wrong. They will call you an art director, not an AD. You Assist lose on the chase. Assistant director. <laughs> What? Assistant director. Assistant director, exactly. Do you think he's important? Yes. Why? Without someone there to be to assist the director, the director could get lost in his own vision. The director gets lost in his tunnel vision. Yeah. Very good, mate. Yeah? <laughs> but do you do anybody else know what an assistant director is? It, yeah, it, holding the camera. Basically the director's voice and they organize everyone for the director to do his job, get his vision on the screen, you know, they're just the, uh, 
the, uh, the buffer between you and everyone else? The buffer. Very good. See, I'll, I'll treat it like the English do and, and have it like tick boxes. You said the word, right? The first AD is the most important person on set. And most of you didn't even know who that was. See, that's problem number two. Yeah? Because when a lot of guys say, hey, you know, I'm going to write my first film. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do the class. I'm going to get all these people together. Right? They don't think about, I need a first AD. And when they're told that you need a first AD, then they think I'll get my best friend, me and Charlie, we, you know, we, we get along, we, we'll do it, right? And Charlie will do anything for me. Or I'll get my girl, she'll do it, cause yeah, I just, you know, you know, she's hanging out. Or if I'm a girl, I'll get my guy, do it, you know, whatever. Point is, you need someone who is, who is not married. Why don't somebody call me and I put it on there? Get it. <laughs> oh, just turn it off for me, please. Oh, that was embarrassing. Right? <laughs> I needed an AD over there to like, no. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, you need someone who's not married to the project. Anybody understand what I mean by that? Not emotionally invested in it? Emotionally invested. You need somebody whose job is the project. And that's why they're a buffer zone. Because what happens is, is that when you are invested in it, you want to make um, your idea, your insanity, horror film, and all that kind of stuff, and you trust your best mate to come in with you, and you guys think, yeah, because we're invested, we're going to make this happen. But you get lost in the source. You get lost in all the details of, like, where is the actors? How come there's no food? What do you mean we're going to get kicked out of this location in an hour? You know? So an AD job is to actually prioritize all of that stuff. The scheduling, coordinating all the people who are actually supposed to be there, technically working for you, and not just kids in your class that just kind of like, yeah, I got nothing to do, right? You need an AD whose job it is to make it a film. Anybody understand what I mean? What about culture? What? Culture? Call sheets. Call sheets, yeah. All right, technically, you know, I mean, you. You need call sheets in a sense where it's all about the paperwork, right? It's all about the production book and all about having all the details. And call sheet is a way of having everybody. A lot of people ask for call sheets for uh, their own agenda, to tell you the truth, my friend. All right? A lot of people, like, you know, all right, if you got like about four or five guys, you know, and they're making your film and you're making a zombie film, right? Right? And they say, yeah, I'll go along with your zombie film. Because why do they want to do that? I want to see what kind of makeup artist you got. I want to see who, what kind of cameraman you got. What kind of equipment you work with. I want to see how long these people have the stamina to stay on your set. Because actually, I have my own horror film, and it's going to combine vampires. So, hey, dude, that a <laughs> So I can get everybody's phone number. After I get off your set, yeah? Now that's kind of like, you know, that's kind of like uh, horrible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many stories, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're working on my film, everybody's all having a good time, and all of a sudden, next week, everybody's working on another film, and I'm sitting here by myself in the edit suite. Oh, yeah? Wow. How they be? Working on my film, huh? That's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, call sheets, yes, are important. Yeah? Right. You know, you can always find out about all the relationships between the yeah, but the assistant director—that's that, only—that's only like the assistant director will probably pass that on to a second, to a second AD, or to the producer or to the production oh, manager. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, pretty much you're talking about admin. I'm talking about creativity. So yes, AD's job in his department is to handle call sheets. That means anybody know what a call sheet is? Right. That means like, okay, here's the schedule. This is where everybody has to be. This is what time you have to show up. So it's your call time. Right? So in that aspect, is the reason why it's a list is so that way you can hand it over to the production manager or somebody or the second AD. Find out where that actor is. What do you mean they lost the traffic? Right? That's what the call sheet is. That's its importance. It has nothing to do with you in that aspect, but that's what's its importance. But that is an AD department. You're right about that. Yeah? But back to what I'm just trying to say, because really, the reason why I'm also talking a lot about the AD is because that's who I was. When I was in the industry back in the state, I was kind of like one of those super hired guns. I'm not of my own, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, that's what I did. Because as a creative person, as a writer, as a director, um, as somebody who worked under a director for a couple of years, I learned all the aspects of production, right? And I encourage you 
that's what you have to do. Learn all the aspects of production. Not just your tunnel vision about I'm a director and I'm gonna make my film. Actually, I wrote it too. Give me some big ups, right? <laughs> it's not about that. Because why should you know what everybody else does? Anybody? Why do you think it's important to know what everybody else does? Because 